Hey folks, it's Dr. Rogan, morning to you. I wanted to share a personal message really with you. Uh, I know we've gone into lockdown two and I don't wanna get into discussions over that <laughs> because there seems to be so many different views at the moment and social media seems to be strangling in lots of ways people's messages, which is a real shame. I wanna really focus on you and what you can do to turn what might be at the moment a kind of a gray situation. Do you like my image by the way, look at this just move out of the way a minute into one of more prosperity and greenness on the other side and I think that's the challenge a lot of people are facing at the moment is where they're placing their focus and that plays out a big part in how you're showing up how you're feeling about this current situation how you filter the information that comes into you because there's so much of it we've got the American elections going on on top of everything else or well, they've just finished and so we tend to filter based on what we are feeling, what we're observing about the world. So if we're feeling the world is kind of shitty at the moment, we're going to tend to filter more of that information in to reinforce those beliefs. Whereas if we have an aspirational part of our psyche that is strongly of the belief that we're going to come through this in a really amazing way, then you will tend to filter out that stuff and, and listen to more of that. And this is where the law of attraction comes in. I'm not going to go into that. What I want to do is give you some practical thoughts on this because many of you might be in a situation where you're literally lo locked down and furloughed in such a way that you, you are pretty much staying at home. So if I pull this up, I thought I'd put some notes up here for you and just to encourage you really. I think as we go through, certainly into December, whether lockdown gets extended, I don't know. Uh, I don't really want to sit here and make a judgment either way on that. But what I want to do is help you prepare and plan for that process so imagine you've got four weeks ahead but I would suggest you actually think eight weeks ahead start to think on what would be some great weekly goals that you can set for yourself so as opposed to be thinking about 2021 right now the whole big picture we are going to come to that in a moment what can you do now what, what could you do this week on a health basis what vitamins do you need to be thinking about adding to your body to improve your immune system and by the way I've got an amazing podcast coming up I think we are recording it next week from memory and that will be drilling down into what you really need to be doing to help build up your immune system and also just get your get yourself into a really good place so start thinking about that health what about uh, what do you need to do on a physical level what about work wise so if you're looking ahead and you're working from home what could be some goals you set but don't allow work to completely control your time so several things have happened during the last lockdown some people almost went the opposite way and rejected the experience of working from home others embraced it to the point where it it got into their bedrooms i mean literally people working out their bedrooms the front rooms the kitchens etc it kind of pervaded everything so there was no sense of home space now work and home blended together and if you've done any self-employment you'll kind of know how that can feel so think about how you want to practically incorporate your work into your week in such a way that you compartmentalize your time and ideally the space in your house if, if it's possible to avoid i mean if you're in a small place it might be a little bit more tricky but you could even allocate a corner of a room if you had to but what i'm saying is make the week structured so that it doesn't just become this blur which for a lot of people it can be switch on the tv watch some netflix get up late, get into a habitual way of being, which is, uh, well, I'll just take it as a bit of a holiday, which I do understand, but actually it's time to ramp it up into 2021. What I don't really think is a good strategy is to get to the end of the year and say, right, this is what we're gonna do next year. And you make all those plans on the 31st of December. Sadly, that's not particularly inspirational because what that does, it gets you excited in the moment. Whereas if you got excited now, you could actually make some great plans and hit 2021 running, hit December 31st running with a plan of action. So I think what a lot of people do is they set New Year's resolutions on in the moment. It's like an espresso coffee. They go, boom, I think it's 18 days later into January. That's gone. So we have to have a plan now. We start planning now for that first day next year. Now, I know for a lot of you, you've got the kids at home like we have and you know there's lots of situations that have changed on a personal level which is why number two is so important to have family discussions if you don't have a family if you're a couple have a couple's discussion if you're on your own 
maybe pick up the phone and talk to a member of your family and let them know what you're looking to do. Have somebody you can discuss with, but have someone to express outwardly what you're planning inwardly. That way you commit to things a lot more. So often that accountability that comes out of a conversation, have a coach or whatever, whatever it takes, but do something uh, that involves you engaging with other people that are close enough to you that won't make a judgment, but at the same time will support you. Now, if it's a family situation, you can't, you're going to need to do this because it might be that you've got work commitments that week or you want to plan a trip, albeit a restricted trip because a certain place you can't go, I know. Um, but it might be an essential trip to a family, member of the family or it could be just that you decide to go that week for a walk in a park or something. But it has to be uh, a plan that involves the family but also involves discussions. Open discussions release the pressure. And those of you that are parents, right now I think the kids need a certain level of honesty but at the same time, they need to be painted a picture that isn't so dark, but it's a little bit more like that. I think what's happening at the moment, I'm, you know, I'm hearing conversations with young kids that shouldn't be having these conversations about death and what if this happens to granny and etc. etc. And a lot of people are saying that their children, and I'm talking to parents, and we're reading this as well in the media, the emotional um, instability, children are starting to feel uncomfortable. They're using language they never would have used about this, and this becomes an emotional scar on our kids. We've got to be mindful of that. Number three, who can you help? This is a great way to become inspired and to be inspiring, is to think about who during this period you could help. Is there someone that you knew struggled during the last lockdown? Is there something you said after the last lockdown? You said, oh man, I wish we'd done more of this. I kind of wish I'd gone and delivered things or helped or dropped food off or just checked in on so-and-so. We must do that next time. Well, we're back in that next time right now. So think about who you could reach out to. It doesn't even have to be a physical activity. It could just be someone you phone that you know didn't deal with lockdown very well last time because if they didn't deal with it last time and that was in the freaking summer, spring summer, what the hell is it going to be like on these short dark days when people are pissed off and not feeling good? So think about what you could do. It could be to do with a charity, it could be just to do an individual, I'm not sure but I'm just sharing with you that when you give beyond yourself and it's one of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you will self-actualize. You'll actualize. Uh, when you self-actualization is like the giving beyond yourself, and it's growing in such a way that a person that self-actualizes is not only able to grow emotionally, but also they are giving beyond themselves, so they feel fulfilled. It's that, that ultimate point. But when you're only focused on your own needs, you don't get that same sense. Yes, you survive, but it, it doesn't have the same feeling as when you help the one person that you know is vulnerable around you. So think about those people. Um, Look to the future. So I don't just mean next week now. Look into 2021 and start asking positive questions. What things can you be doing? What could you build right now? This is the weekly plans. Could you be fitting in some time to write a book, to create a product, to inspire somebody, to learn know, an instrument, whatever. I said this is the first lockdown. So what do you want 21 to look like? 2021 has to have an image of uh, that. Where are we there? Yeah. <laughs> My camera switched around on my screen. So how's it going to look for you in the next year? And not looking from a gloomy place. Oh my God, this has happened. I know some of you may have had losses or illnesses, whatever. But it has to be a shift. The past doesn't equal the future. That's what we have to remember. What went on there does not mean the future has to look like that. So we have to change the picture in our mind and start to manifest that through certain actions and connections with people. And then just be persistent in this be, be relentless in this on a weekly basis set yourself a goal of checking in have we done this have we had the family conversation have we started talking about the future who can i help and create a habit because through persistence habits form and if you do it enough times these habits just become a way of life for you that's it five things hopefully that was useful that was 10 minutes <laughs> a bit of inspiration and maybe a bit of practical tools as well all right I'm going to sign out. Have an amazing day. But remember what I've talked about. have got a great month ahead. Just think of it like that. Turn it into something that becomes a productive month, this lockdown period through to December. Dr. Rose signing out.